Hi, I'm Ingrid Karlqvist for the Gatestone Institute. Once upon a time, there was a safe welfare state called Sweden. This beautiful part of Sweden that we call Skåne is where my forefathers lived as long back as I have been able to research, the beginning of the 18th century. Now, Sweden has turned into Absurdistan, a country that has one of the highest number of reported rapes in the world. Hundreds of so-called exclusion areas, more than 55 no-go zones where police and ambulance get stoned and Sharia law is becoming more important than Swedish law. Once upon a time, people rarely locked their doors in this area. Now, this country is a night watchman state. Each man is on his own. Last year, 163,000 asylum seekers came to Sweden and even though we have since then introduced border controls, the prognosis is that somewhere between 70,000 and 140,000 will come this year to a country with a total population of 9.5 million. In November last year, I interviewed salesmen from several security companies. They all said that there is a really high demand for alarm systems right now. One of them said, it is largely due to the turbulence we are seeing around the country. People have lost confidence in the state. The police will not come anymore. One of the things that Swedes are most scared of is rape even though it's forbidden to keep statistics on the rapist's ethnic background or religion. We know who is behind the near 1500% increase of rapes in Sweden. Almost every day we can read in the so-called alternative media about rapes against Swedish women and girls committed by asylum seekers or other migrants from the third world. Up until a few decades ago, no one had heard about gang rape. Now it happens every week. This has of course been going on for many years, but the Swedes have been so brainwashed by the government and the mainstream media that no one has protested about the rape on Sweden. But that has all changed. These days, no one can escape the horrible realities. Just a couple of miles from here is a little village that used to have 900 inhabitants. But last year the authorities placed 400 asylum seekers in that little village. That means that almost half of the total population is now people from Somalia, Eritrea, Afghanistan and Syria. It's really turned the whole village upside down. I have talked to people who live and work around there. At first, they were happy to welcome people to their part of the world. They arranged lunches and Christmas celebrations and donated clothing to the migrants. Now, many of the locals are afraid and confused. With tears in their eyes, they tell me how their friendly village has been totally transformed by these young, aggressive male asylum seekers. The asylum seekers scream at the locals, call the women whores, they steal from the shops and don't seem at all grateful or happy to be here. Many wonder what these asylum seekers expected when they arrived in Sweden. Daily Svenska Dagbladet interviewed Salar from Iraq who complained. We can't sit here and wait for the decision on residence permit indefinitely. We sit at the asylum house all day long and do nothing. Our children have nothing to do. There is no playground here. And the food that is served here is strange. It doesn't at all look like the food we are used to. Salar is not alone. Actually, more people are going back to Iraq now than coming here. This year, 1,243 have applied for asylum and 1,366 have taken the application back. But that is just a drop in the ocean. The people here, they wonder if peace will ever come back to this place. This is Ingrid Kalkvist for the Gatestone Institute. Mm -hmm.